So that go, nearly going broke thing, best thing that ever happened. Today we're having beer with Luke Mangang, a uh, restaurateur. Did I pronounce that right? Yeah, but can you spell it? No. No. There you go. I'm not a, I'm not a writer. you got issues, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so Luke Mangan and Co. Um, today, mm. 19 restaurants, almost 700 staff, is mm. it? Partnerships, licenses, all in place. Yeah. Um, from the outside, it looks like a very consistent and efficient business. Businesses, group of businesses. That wasn't always the case, was it? It was certainly never planned, no. No. But, you know, <laughs> who knows? Um, things just happen, don't they? I mean, um, kicked out of school young and just sort of fell into it. F fell into 19 restaurants. <laughs> well, you know, pr probably 10, 11 years ago, I was, I was nearly broke. Yeah. So um, w when I went through that stage, I started to look at things because, you know, with restaurants, they're risky business, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, as you said, on the outside, looking in, it looks great. But, the, you know, the, the amount of staff you need behind it, yeah. r rents and things like that, um, it, it's a big business. So, yeah. uh, and you've got to, there's a lot of competition in this business, uh, not just here in Australia, but around the world and, and a lot of great chefs and, and you've just got to keep ahead of the game. Yeah. What's a good profit margin for a restaurant? Well, you want to run your food costs about 30%. Yeah. Um, profit margin, well, you know, a cafe can work on 3%. Yeah. Uh, Good restaurants can work on between 10 and 20 percent. Um, so, so you know, so some restaurants only do that three to three to five percent. When you were almost going broke, was the, we're talking early 2000s, I would guess. It was about 2005, actually. Yeah. Okay. Cool. May so, 17, 2005, 11 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, great. <laughs> you got a tattoo somewhere? Yeah. Um, what were your mistakes? A lot of young chefs just think about food and it's all about them yeah. and it's not and, and uh, that was one mistake I made I think and um, probably grew too quick but in saying that in the last 10 years we also have now 19 restaurants yeah. but I sort of have a different head on my shoulders for, because of that experience I had yeah. nearly going broke. Yeah. So that go, n nearly going broke thing, best thing that ever happened yeah. in a way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, coming back to, to you know what general entrepreneurs can learn from the from, from the category, that continuous daily live feedback from the customers. I mean, a lot of people will kill for that, right? Yeah. Rather than the annual survey yeah. of, of how are we want to buy. That's true. How, how do you deal with that? Always, I mean, the, the sort of kitchen feedback coming into the kitchen. You you have to. I mean, I'm a big believer of um, talking to customers, listening to customers. Yeah. Um, they're your bread and butter yep. <laughs> in our business. And, and, you know, when I had salt and even now when I, you know, in, in the restaurants, I'm on the floor talking to customers. How did you like that? What was that? You know, yeah. if they don't like something, yeah. you've got to understand why. Yeah. Not everyone's going to like everything you do. That's yeah. number one. And, you, you know, you, you've got to remember that and put your ego aside. Not yeah, everyone yeah. is going to enjoy everything you do. The skill of building a team yeah. has to come in somewhere. Did you always have that or? Um, no, I learned to step back and, and to grow, you probably need to. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm lucky enough that all our head chefs in our restaurants have come up through the ranks. Yeah. So from starting from an apprentice to, to now head chef. Yeah. And to me, that makes sense. So I'm a big believer in promoting within. Mm. Uh, the team see that and then they continue to stay. Um, so, so that's important. And, and then also giving them freedom to work treat that restaurant, individual restaurant, as their own. What does money mean to you? Uh, money means growth. I don't drive a flash car. You know, I'm, I'm not, flat, you know. So you rock up in a Lamborghini? <laughs> you call that flash? <laughs> you should see the Ferrari. Um, no, but I mean, you know, money means growth, I think, yeah. yeah. I've heard you talk about the, uh, when you were younger and looking at the older chefs being sort of chained to a stove kind mm. of thing. Uh, tell me about that moment, because that comes into diversification even within the company, right? Yeah. Balancing the, the, the cash flow, I guess. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I went into a restaurant uh, here in Sydney 10 years ago, but probably longer, 15 years ago, and it was a great restaurant. I used to go there most, most weekends, yeah. and you know, it was a Saturday lunch, and I was looking around, and there was two or three tables, you know, and every Saturday lunch was always two or three tables. And this chef, who was a friend of mine, he was older, he'd be 50, 50 back then, he was just standing in that kitchen cooking away and miserable, yeah. you know, yeah. unhappy. Yeah. And he's just trying to make a living, yeah. which is great. You know, I'm not knocking that. But I looked in and I just thought, I didn't want to be like that when I was 50. 
And there was only one way to stop that. Mm. And that was to go out and try and expand yeah. and do multiple things to get multiple streams of income. Yeah. And when you've got multiple streams of income, you can do more things. Yeah. And, and that's the way I looked at it. And, and not so being as vulnerable. Yeah. yeah. And so that was a blessing in disguise. Yeah. So when I first had salt, I did a cookbook. If one restaurant goes down for me, mm. they're not all going to go down. No. Does that make sense? But, but, but 20 years ago, one restaurant could have brought, well, it nearly did bring yeah. everything down. Yeah. So I learned. Well, you come across very much like a nice guy. Oh, um, wow, thanks. Adaptations. You don't know where I'm taking this. No. <laughs> what, you want me to buy the next beer? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> um, but when are you not, though? I mean, because again, business at some level, at what times are you a cold, harsh businessman? Um, I'm a big believer in karma. Mm. So um, <clears throat> I think you've got to, you, you've got to be careful with all that stuff. Mm. And, and if people are out there to screw you, well, um, you know, let them do it. Not let them mm. do it, but you know, that's the way they want to be. Do I turn? Sometimes I get pissed off, but I don't like to be taken advantage of no. or lied to. As you're starting out, whatever you're starting out with, um, the incoming is very low. <laughs> it's mo mostly outreach. Yeah. As you grow, that tend to shift and the incoming increases. And obviously you've got, I would guess, a high level of, of incoming ideas, projects, people want to start this and that. How do you deal with that? How do you look at that? If a deal comes to me, money goes over there. Mm. Don't, don't even... Whatever don't. amount of money? Yep. 100 million in Dubai. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, however, someone recently has tried to buy our business mm. and, um, you know, they got talking figures and I said, look, you know what, let's not talk figures. Let's draw the map of what you want out of my business and what you yeah. want and what it means to me and all that. Mm. And then we sat down and, and blah, 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 blah. And you know what? I didn't like the way it sounded. Mm. So, yeah. Because right. I knew there was no future in it for me. Yeah, yeah, I can take a whole whack now, go Caribbean, go to Italy, whatever. Yeah, be a good two weeks. Yeah, then. good two <laughs> weeks, exactly. Um, but yeah, that, that's not my end goal, to be honest. Money doesn't motivate me in that way. Thanks for your time, Ian. Thanks, mate.